Aureliano Babilonia acabara de descifrar los pergaminos y que todo lo escrito en ellos era irrepetible desde siempre y para siempre, porque las estirpes condenadas a cien años de soledad no tenían una segunda oportunidad sobre la tierra. Welcome to another book review and today I've got a bit of a special one. This is one of the book Cien Años de Soledad or in English A Hundred Years of Solitude. This is by the author Gabriel Garcia Marquez and I actually read this in Spanish so uh, it's going to be a little bit of a different one in the sense that my approach to the reading of the book and what I thought of it is heavily influenced by how I actually read it. What is this book? Well, it's uh, one of the like classic pieces of Latin American culture of, of writing. It was done during the Latin American boom in the 1960s to the 70s. So this was published in 1967. And it's by the author, his, his magnum opus, I guess. And you can really see how much effort has been put into this. And it really captures, I, I think, a bit of the spirit of um, Hispano-Americans in general. Uh, and it's already a classic. Uh, I won't particularly go through the plot or the summary of the book because it's super long, but essentially there's uh, uh, some people in the, I guess, like outskirts or the wilderness of, of Colombia. And uh, this is the, the funders of, or the founders of, of Macondo, which is the town where basically the whole plot takes place, which starts with Jose Arcadio Buendia and Ursula Iguaran. They basically have kids and other people get introduced to the novel, but it's basically the, the whole novel is focused on this one family and they're living in this town and the events that sort of surround it. But that really doesn't do any justice. If you want to read like a full plot of it, you, you have to go deep. You pretty much have to read the book. Uh, I'm not sure you can adequately give a short summary of, of the book because it is huge. It's uh, 470 something pages in total. And you're going to have to give it some time and some effort, uh, especially if you're reading in Spanish. So what are some of the themes of the book? I guess one of them and one of the main ones was the changing of time and fortune. So you can see there's no real constancy. It's always fluctuating between characters, between death and life, between the, the birth of, of new characters, the, the passing away of others the slip into insanity of, of some of them and the, I guess, recovering from insanity as well. Uh, all of this mixed with a, like one constancy, which is the parchments um, given to them by Melchiades, which is like a gypsy who stayed with the family. And he wrote basically these, these parchments, these scrolls that were un undecipherable. Nobody could figure them out. And, there are many characters in the book who take a stab at trying to figure them out. And it's not until the very end, which I was reading just then of, of what happens when one of the characters, the, one of the last Aurelianos actually manages to, to decipher and read about what's in them. What I noticed was some of the characters that had the hardest time in the book that were like the most uh, depressed or, it just had the worst lives out of everyone. And a lot of the characters in the book had some pretty, pretty shambly lives, but the, the worst ones, which for me was probably Fernanda del Carpio and El Coronel Aureliano Buendia, the, the Colonel, both of them were very strict and severe in, in how they approached life. And you could sort of see with the changing of the time, with changing all of the changes that went on in the city within people as well. These two characters tried to, make sure everything was in its place. Fernanda was very meticulous with the housework and wanted the prestige and all these other things. But uh, she was one of the ones who yeah, basically had, was constantly distressed, constantly things were going wrong for her. Similar in a way to the coronel, uh, the colonel, which he, he just was constantly starting these wars and these fights and fighting against the government and just had a real struggle, I think, in his life. He, he seemed like someone who was never happy, who never had a constancy as well. Uh, some uh, The naming as well in the book and, and the repetition gives this real sense of, of changing, but things staying the same as well. Uh, the family is rather incestuous. They, they start off with two cousins um, forming the town and forming their, their legacy, their 
their heritage, their, their family tree. And from there, it just gets more complicated. Siblings sleeping with uh, the same girl, um, having kids. Uh, uh, <laughs> one of the last ones is uh, an aunt and a nephew or a ne- yeah, and a nephew um, having love, making relations. And it's all a, all a mess and with all the naming as well, which is there's lots of Aurelianos. There's lots of um, Jose Arcadios. There's lots of Ursulas and um, Remedios as well. So it's it's very difficult at, at times to pass out what is what. So when you're reading it, just give it some time, give it some patience because especially at the start, you're going to be completely confused when they start naming off all these different things. There's a sense of nostalgia as well, of, of longing, of loneliness that is captured within the book and he captures it exquisitely. There's, there's something to be said for, you know, if you're not depressed and, and really hurting, but if you're going through maybe a little bit of a bad time, if you're going through changes and, and not understanding what's going on, I feel this book captures that, that intense intenseness of it. Yeah, and it's not particularly a good thing, but it's not particularly a bad thing either. Uh, for me, I always feel it a, l- a lot more retrospectively rather than in the moment. Uh, but I know some people as well feel it, that, that nostalgia, there's, a, there's like a joy in being lonely and or or the loneliness something like that so yeah that's a a real interesting essence that he manages to capture in the book and i feel he does a really good job of of doing that one of the other main things that i found was you can be alone but not lonely and that's captured and, and vice versa as well you can be with lots of people and but then feel this intense loneliness that no one knows how to connect with you and whatnot. You can see this particularly with the Aurelianos in, in the book. There's uh, Aureliano II, or Aure- uh, Aureliano II, has, is like a wild man. He parties, he has all these fiestas, and um, you can see like he enjoys that, but after a time, it's sort of like he feels isolated while doing that. And then vice versa with the other Aurelianos in general who are the ones who study the parchments in this room and they're locked away, they're on their own, but they get this intense joy, this intense sense of meaning from doing this one thing when they're on their own. Uh, and yeah, I, I just, I, I could absolutely connect with that. I don't particularly need people around me all the time. I don't need to be connected as such, uh, rather introverted in the things I like to do. So I, I really connected with, with me that sort of sense of being like, you know what, it's okay to do your own things as long as you're getting enjoyment out of it. It doesn't always have to be with people. You don't always have to be on and and connecting and and whatnot. Some of my own observations from the book, it has these distinct subplots, but they're very meandering as well. So I suppose after a while, you can sort of follow the theme of the book. If you told me like repeated something back to me, I'd probably be like, oh yeah, I remember that part of the book, but it'd be very hard to say where exactly it was in it because it all sort of meshes together and it's it's very hard to tell like uh, what one thing happened and why it was important or not important. And I guess for most of the book, nothing that really happens in it is really that important. So you could, I think you could easily take away whole chapters and the book would still flow just as easily as before, maybe because uh, it doesn't really reference that much back to previous events. I suppose just the whole theme of of things changing, of being in a in a place where uh, it it sort of rises and falls, where the time can go away in a in a click in an instant, and then it'll come back in like a big rush with lots of things happening at the, at one time. So that was that was really interesting for me. Uh, and this is where I'll get on to how I read the book. So reading it in Spanish, my Spanish is okay, but it needs a lot of improvement. And I said to myself, I'm going to read this book and I'm going to understand every single word. And so that's what I really tried to do. So I have a little book here, which is just full of my learnings from the book. Each word that I didn't understand, I would write down, I'd write it down in the middle column in English, uh, sorry, in Spanish. And then the translations on either side of it um, into into English. This took a long, long time. So 
normally I can read at a relatively fast pace, probably about a page a minute is probably my, my pace in general. Uh, but I was studying this book like crazy, putting probably about an hour a day into it. And I would read maybe three pages, maybe four pages in that hour. So it took me over like 200 hours of reading to fully get through the book. I can say that I pretty much understood every word, but even then I didn't understand some of the phrasing and there's things that in Spanish, I, I just don't have the, the knowledge of, of how they say particular things. But for me, it felt like a hundred years of solitude because I spent 200 hours in my own study, studying this book, like really just trying to nail it down, really trying to understand it. So my connection to the book is a lot deeper than any other book I've probably ever read in the sense that this is the one I've spent the most time on. This is the one I got to try and know the best. And it just so happens that the themes of the book connect very well to, to being on your own, to being solitary. I at times felt like the Aurelianos uh, in <laughs> with the parchments of Melchiades, like trying to understand, decipher what the hell does this mean? Getting frustrated, getting annoyed, having moments of insight and being like, oh, I understand this. I remember that word. Uh, and yeah, I don't, don't know if you can tell. I, I, I really enjoyed this book in in that sense where it just, it touched me deeply. Uh, and it's probably one I'm always going to remember because if you do something for like seven, eight months of your life and it's a daily focused thing like that, it, it's going to have an effect on you. Time forgets all and uh, nobody is immune to that. So in the book, I, I think you can see that if some people are trying to create like a legacy, which they're not particularly, but you'll just see that as it goes on, there seems to be this forgetting of where they come from, how things operate and what, like what made them successful, what didn't make them successful because it's focusing on a family in, in essence. And by the end of the book in the sixth generation, the the only one who remembers not even the first generation but the second generation um the the colonel Aureliano Buendia there's only one person who who remembers him uh, or basically everyone else who sort of does dies off and the whole town goes into like a depression the whole town goes into this forgetfulness where they don't remember the the massacre that happened they don't remember when the um, the train arrived, they don't remember when the plantation, the banana plantation started work. They don't remember the founding of the town and the gypsies and the flying carpets and all the crazy things. So it's uh, it's really interesting reading that and then just seeing uh, how how different that is. Magic realism as well requires a very light touch and there's moments where it transitions between real, well, it's it's all fiction obviously, but the real realistic fiction and then the next moment there'll be flying carpets the next moment there'll be blood that trickles down through the streets and goes and finds this person the next moment they'll um the a kid will be born with a a tail or um remedios the beauty will ascend into heaven so it requires a very light touch and i'm yeah absolutely amazed at how well he did a job of of blending this all in together very very nice to read the book i think especially in Spanish, you need to have the glossary at the end, which will have some very particular Colombian, Spanish, and even Mexican words in it, which uh, I would have had no, no clue, no ability to be able to understand. And I think it's also essential to have the family tree. So I've got the um, commemorative edition here of the book, uh, and it has a, a family tree in it. And I think that's absolutely essential because especially with the naming of, of characters and how they repeat, it's very, very difficult to, to understand and realize like, oh, this was this Aureliano, oh, this was this Jose Alcadio. And yeah, it gets, it gets messy quickly. Uh, reading it in Spanish had a different feeling as well. It's, uh, Spanish, I feel, is a lot more evocative in the sense of being able to conjure up feelings and emotion than English is. I think English is a lot more... Uh, I guess straightforward and, and it, it has like a little bit less of rhythmical qualities to it. So one of the things I noticed was there's a lot more words in Spanish to, uh, to describe something like exhausted 
for example, uh, agotado, rendido. There's there's just all these different words which I I personally am like translating it roughly the same, but I get the sense like oh this is has this little bit of a different sense. This has this little different uh, bit of a meaning, and I really enjoyed that. I I feel like Spanish is a good a good language to be able to like express sentiments and emotions a little bit better than English. At least that's what I'm finding at the moment. Uh, the book is linked to Colombia and some real life experiences there. So the Haciendas, which is like the big castle, the big one story houses with multiple, multiple rooms for entire generations of families, the, the culture, the uh, invasion of the Europeans and, and their customs into like Colombia and into a town. Uh, as well as the Banana Massacre, which I actually never knew about before. So that was uh, interesting, sad to read about, but also interesting. My final recommendations from it is don't read intros, introductions to books. I find them, in general, they will either give, give away the plot, they really don't add anything. And I find the insights that people write about just aren't that interesting. I, I prefer to find my own insights. In this book, because it's a commemorative edition, they had like Carlos Fuentes, uh, a bunch of different Vargas Llosa, Mario Vargas Llosa, like a bunch of very well-known Spanish speakers giving introductions. And it most of it, to be honest, was like wank and self-importance. It didn't really add much. If you want to know the themes of the book, I think it's much better to just go to like Wikipedia or Sparknotes or something like that. So... Yeah, it's maybe useful for like the biography of a person or some like personal anecdotes, but for the actual book itself, I think it's better to, to just read it yourself, to be honest. So in total, it's a difficult book, but worth reading. Uh, one day I'll probably give it a shot in English, but I, I did it in Spanish. And to be honest, it's like one of the most proud books. I'm, I'm proud of myself for reading it because it took a goddamn long time and it was uh, uh, a special book, a special book. So I'm giving it a seven and a half out of 10, uh, but I feel like it could be more than that as well, depending on, I think I need a bit of time to like soak in and, and relax and remember what the book was all about as well. So that was it. That was my impressions of A Hundred Years of Solitude, Cien Años de Soledad by Gabriel Garcia Marquez, something pragmatic I'm gonna take from it. Uh, I'm gonna read it again in Spanish, but like out loud and not care if I don't understand the words. It It's an important book and uh, I can only recommend it highly to everyone. So that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed. Karen out.